Pastor Drew, I'm worried as a parent about when my kids start to ask me questions about faith and spirituality and God. How, how, do, how am I supposed to find the right answers to these things? Oh, that is a great question. Let's explore it together. Hi, I'm Pastor Drew Ingram and I'm here with my friend Brandon Hill and we're here to talk about questions and questions that we might be dealing with from our kids about faith and God and life. Uh, as a parent of two kids under five um, and Brandon, a new dad himself, we know that parenting is exhausting and exciting and so much of it happens in the midst of uncertainty and uncharted territory. Each time you're a parent with a different kid Things are different and it's hard to feel comfortable and confident in the midst of that uncertainty at times. So our hope is as we engage these questions about faith and God and parenting together, we might be able to build our confidence in the midst of that uncertainty. I'm super excited about doing this video series uh, with Drew. I am a new parent myself. So I've got all kinds of questions about parenting, but specifically when it comes to faith and God and Christianity and how do I want to raise my own kid. So I'm really excited about a lot of the topics we're going to be covering, like prayer and the Bible and being a part of a faith community, um, because I'm very much in the middle of asking those questions myself. So these are coming from a real place for me actually searching this out as a new parent. Um, but for this first video, we're going to be talking about questions themselves and when kids are asking us as their parents, when they're starting to ask us questions, how do we respond? What might come up for us? Um, so with that, I think we're just gonna jump right into me peppering you, Drew, with a bunch of my own questions about how do I deal with my kids' questions? Does that sound good? That's right, questions about questions. That's what yeah. we're doing. Awesome, let's get into it. I think a fun place to start would be What's been some of your experience with your own kids? Your dad, you've got two little ones. What's been your experience with them asking questions about faith, God, spirituality, Christianity? Um, do you have, I'm sure you've got plenty of stories about other people's kids <laughs> uh, and other parents, but your own kids. Tell me as a dad. Yeah, my, nothing makes me simultaneously more excited and nervous than when my kids ask me <laughs> a question, like kind of any question, right? So I'll give you, um, before I give you a nice good faith one, um, just the other day in worship, my son was listening to somebody speak and he was just wondering like, hey, when was that guy a kid and what was it like when he was a kid? <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, like one. Like, so there's an adult on stage yes, talking. Yes. And you're kind of was like, he was a kid one day. Right. When, when, when was that? Right. <laughs> um, and kind of what was it like? And, and so part of me is like, how do I encourage your curiosity about this question? And at the same time, like help keep the boundaries of like what are what social dorms are where you're just not going to go up to anybody and ask them their age. And it wasn't, and I, so what I did is I kind of teased out with him. Well, like, what do you really want to, like, do you just want to know, like, the year he was a kid or the years he was yeah. a kid? Or do you want to know what it was like or these kinds of things? And then later I let him ask it. I found an opportunity for him not to ask, just to ask me about it, but to ask. But that's one of those, like, I'm like, ooh, this is like, a, that's, that's a, I love that you're thinking about this this way. Also, I'm a little bit nervous that you're just going to be like, hey, when were you a kid? <laughs> um, <laughs> During service. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but all of that says to me, um, this, kids often have this fundamental posture of curiosity. Mm, yeah. um, and I, I equate it a lot to thinking about like when we experience things for the first time, um, we might be tuned in in a different way and more open to asking questions. Um, and, and nothing gets me excited when people are in that mode mm -hmm. and kids often are in that mode. In terms of faith and things, a lot of them have come my way from, uh, they happen on the spot in children's sermons. My kids are not afraid to interrupt me at any moment. Um, and, uh, and also in car rides and different things. So I remember questions like when we were talking during Holy Week about uh, the end of the last days of Jesus' life and, he, and Jesus dying and coming back to life. You know, why, why did Jesus have to die? When did Jesus die? What does the cross remind us of? And these are some questions that uh, maybe particularly that last one, like I had maybe posed to them and they're 
reframing and bringing back to me in a different time and setting. Um, but that's maybe one of the biggest ones, right? Like, why did Jesus have to die? And I'm like, baby girl, theologians have been asking this question since Jesus died. Um, so you are just as smart as theologians. That's right, that's right. <laughs> You're asking the, the same, same questions. Question, right? And that's maybe one of my things is, you've, you're asking this question that we've been asking mm. for a long time. And can I remind you, you're not the first person to ask this question. And how beautiful is it that other people have asked this question? And yet also, again, that excitement and nervousness of we're still asking this question. Yeah. Um, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of answer to it. And, and not necessarily a quick and easy one. And so then what becomes my role, both as parent and as pastor, when I receive a question like that from anybody, regardless of their age, how do I invite you into this conversation mm. and exploration about the meaning of the death of Jesus um, and, and what it says about who God is and who we are that's been going on for millennia? Yeah. And that's, that's, I love the way you're phrasing that because I think for a lot of parents, myself included, there's this feeling of, am I supposed to have the answer for, is, is being a good parent knowing the right answers to feed my kids? Um, they're asking me, hey, dad, you're tall and wear <laughs> pants and can button up your own shirt. You probably know how this, th so as a pastor, as a parent, what do you feel like is the, are we supposed to be giving answers to our kids? What, what, are we, what do we do when they come to us with these questions? Depends on the question, <laughs> right? Um, here's, here's my answer to that question is, there's not one right answer. Um, there's, there's not, there are a variety of ways that you can respond. And the way in which a parent responds to their kid is going to tell them a lot, as much or more than your response. Mm, I love that. What, so, okay, tell me more about that. Yeah, so if, if um, gosh, let me give you like a really mundane, if my kid asked to have chicken nuggets for breakfast, <laughs> or like, or why can't, you know, if I'm like, if it's like I want chicken nuggets for breakfast, like, we don't eat chicken nuggets for breakfast, why don't we eat chicken nuggets for breakfast, yeah. right? Um, how I answer that question is going to be as important as, as me answering the question uh -huh. at all. Um, because I could say, stop asking me that question. I've made my decision. That's the end of that. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, I could say, oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we just don't, which is a fair answer. Right. Um, if I don't want to get into like opening up social constructs of what we in this particular place and time eat for breakfast and what we don't, um, yeah. if I say, I haven't had know, my coffee yet. Stop right. asking me about yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, but also, right. I think that's a legitimate answer to be like, you know, that's a great question. I'm going to have to unpack it another time. But what I can tell you right now is we're not going to have chicken nuggets for breakfast. Right. Um, but all, you know, all of that says something different or I can be like, you know, why, why don't we? And just like sit, you know, repeat the question and, and sit with it. Why might we not? I could, I could directly ask my kid to, you know, their response yeah, um, okay. and, and why so, they think, right? But each of those things is, so while I may have an answer, right? And, yeah. and in that case, my answer might be like, we're not going to eat chicken nuggets for breakfast today, right? Um, but the way in which I bring that answer, even if I am going to bring an answer, which to certain questions, maybe you won't, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can, but I can think of even, uh, two and three year olds are great at like the endless why, right? Just why, 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 why? You know, I could sit here all day and eventually it's going to get to a place where, where I don't know, where I can't answer or where I just would really like you to stop asking me why right now because I can't deal with it yet, right? Um, but the way that we get from point A to point B or the way that we deliver that answer is also going to teach our kids about questions, about answers, about what happens when we ask a question, about curiosity in general. I love that because that immediately zooms me out from what is the right words I'm supposed to share to my kid and says, oh, these, the, the way that I'm answering matters. And so I love with chicken nuggets. That's such a great example <laughs> before we even get into Jesus and God and faith and the biggest things that even with chicken nuggets, it's like, oh, this is not a safe place to ask my questions, or when not I the act, right time, or the not right, or yeah, or 
um, or if I come to my parents with questions, they're going to shoot it down. It's, um, it's not welcomed. Curiosity is like all of those things are being answered in the way that we respond to our kids' questions. So I love starting from that place. (laughs) But let me give one one caution. Doing it the wrong way once is also not going to like ruin everything, right? So, so, and there are plenty of times where I'm like, yeah, I have not had my coffee and I really can't answer this question right now. Um, But I do try to, you know, make those points in a way that's not going to make my kids feel like they can never ask a question. Yeah. Right? Or Or in the same way, if, if I get hit with a big theological question when I'm standing at the doors um, and greeting people on the way out, right? Like, I don't have the, the fortitude and fort with or necessarily have put the thought into articulating very quickly an answer and response to that question. Yeah. So then my, the way that I handle that kind of question is, you know, just, wow, that's a fantastic question. I love that you're asking that. Can we find some time to talk about it, right? Can we talk about this at another moment? Um, because how can, I, how can I encourage curiosity, which I think is vital to faith and life, um, and, and not put restraints and constraints on it? But again, I want to tell you and every parent, right? Like, when you don't have the capacity for it, like, there's also nothing wrong with telling your kids, like, yeah. hey, I just can't right now. Um, that's not that you're not asking a bad question. That's not this, I but I just imagine. like, I'm not ready to answer. <laughs> yeah. Or, or as the parents, um, depending on your own experience with faith, with religion, mm-hmm. certain things might come up, uh, fears, anxieties, uh, whatever might come up with if, if your kid starts asking you a question specifically yeah. about faith. And it might be appropriate to say, that's a great question. I'd love to talk about it another time, just so that you can personally compose yourself sure. and think through, okay, I want to make sure I'm not emitting all kinds of fear and anxiety about this thing, but let me find a space where I feel comfortable and, um, and maybe you need to do some, your own, um, maybe you want to talk about it with a, a, a peer, a friend, or your pastor and be like, hey, my kid's asking me this. I just need to talk this out before I talk with them. So I love the, the tool of um, deciding whether or not this is the right time and maybe letting your kid know, like, I love that. Let's find another time for that. Could be totally appropriate. I'm curious, when kids, your own kids, other kids, are starting to ask questions about faith, spirituality, God, um, or just big questions about life, what is it that you feel like they're really asking for? Mm. Because my hunch is that oftentimes they might not really be searching for a specific answer, a handful of words from you that they can hold on. Maybe sometimes, but my hunch is that maybe there's sometimes other things going on that they're searching for. Part of which being what you alluded to earlier, which is sometimes they're just asking for the way that you answer it Mm. shows them so much more. But I'm curious when they're asking about faith, God, what do you think a a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a 10-year-old is really searching for there? Yeah, I have to lean on my limited knowledge, but a little bit of knowledge in like human development Mm -hmm. and uh, the way that our thinking develops over time. And again, I'm no expert in this particular field, but I know a little bit, especially as it relates to faith questions and things. But we think about uh, infants, if they have some sense of of God, of higher power, it is usually directly tied to parent. Mm -hmm. Like this is... I cry, this person gives me what I need to sustain, um, you know, these early, early days of development. And as kids get a little bit older, they start to, uh, when they start to self-differentiate, right? Like when they realize like, oh, that's me in the mirror, that's not another kid, or kind of like figuring out object permanence uh, might be another one of the times that those questions come up, right? Like um, when the same times when kids realize like, oh, sometimes mom walks out of the room and it's a long time before mom comes back, right? Yeah. Uh, and they're starting to get that sense of time. Then there are sometimes some faith questions that come along with that as you're trying to figure out what exactly is going on in the world around me writ large. What's my place? So there's a lot of questions, kind of like existential questions, uh, even if they're not, because they're, the questions may not be that, but they're sometimes finding their root in, in that. Yeah. So in object permanence, right, it, it's one thing to think about God as an ever-present mother ready to nurse their child, mm. right? Which is an image from scripture, 
by the way, right? People sometimes forget that, you know, we talk about God as mother. Um, but, you know, ready to, to nurse a, a child. And, but then it's like, okay, but what about those times when mom goes away and doesn't come back for a little bit? Does God go away and not come back? Is God here sometimes and not here other times? And um, trying to work through some of those bits and pieces in relationship to when you're piecing out kind of identity, right? Like I'm me and you're you. I'm Drew, you're Brandon. Um, This is mom. This is, you know, where is Jesus? Who is God? Uh, All of this. And so I think that that's a big piece of it. And so there are some really core tenets, especially as young kids, but really as anybody, um, that I think are some of the first things that we learn about God. We learn what God is like. We learn, we, we learn what God is like. And so the, like having a place for kids in worship teaches kids that there's a place for, like that God has space for me, mm. right? That I'm welcome here um, among God's people, that, wow. that I'm welcome, that God loves me and welcomes. Again, me. it's more of the, the way that you're answering these questions rather than the, the answers themselves are so much. Uh, so just, the, well, have, I, and I would say like, it's, it's all part of it. Right? Yeah. To think that it's all the teaching. Word, yeah. It's all teaching them something. They're soaking up how this all works by everything, not just the content of your words. So I love that. Sorry, keep going. Right. Yeah, no, so I mean, so, the, so that I'm welcome here, that there is room and space for me here. In the same way, there's room and space for my questions, or there's not, right? Mm, yeah. Or people don't like it when I'm loud here. Uh, people don't like it when I, people seem to not, to respond poorly when I ask this kind of question. Um, I have to act this certain way in this space. And, um, and when it's done in the context of religion and a, a, a language system, a church, a community, um, we're, we're testing out what that looks like. So, you know, I would relate this to, uh, in parenting, you, you learn, like maybe when your kid's first starting to walk or even before that, like, when they fall, it's really hard, but the more you react, the more they'll react. Mm. So like if your kid falls and you're like, oh, ooh, right? Like they're gonna cry. Like nine times out of 10, maybe more than that, like they are gonna, they're gonna get really scared and overwhelmed versus it's like, oh, did you fall? Okay, let's get back up and get going, right? Which is hard, really hard to do sometimes as a yeah. parent. And I mean, I'm not talking like if they like fell off of a playscape or something, sure, right? Sure. Like if we have a different response, but I'm talking about, you know, a few inches from, yeah. from standing to, to on the floor. Um, like how you, how you respond is as important as what you say. Cause if I went, Oh, 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 you're okay. You're okay. Yeah. Right? Like the, the, my kid is going to look at me and be like, I don't know if dad means it. Yeah. Um, and so I would just, you know, it's kind of the same thing, right? Um, if I say, to the kids, you're welcome here. And then it's like, Shh. <laughs> don't ask, don't interrupt. Well, what kind of welcome here am I, right? Yeah. And, and, and in the same way, we, we're, we're constantly learning what God is like, what love is like, and processing through that, uh, whatever our age is, but the different stages of development might prompt different questions, right? Yeah. Like, again, like my son, like, when was he a kid? Like, it's like, maybe he's realizing now at this point, like, oh, once upon a time, everybody was three, like I am, right? And yeah. so like, well, when was that, that you were where I am now, right? Uh, the same things come up about God and faith in our faith development and formation. And, and so thinking about what I then think about my role as parent or as pastor or as friend is to hold in mind kind of that bigger thing of like, what do I really want you to know? What, what is most important for me to communicate to you about God in the way that I answer your question? Mm. So, okay, I love yeah. that, but I'm curious, let's give a specific example of that. Sure. So um, what's, a, what's a question that a kid might ask? Um, so let's, let's ask the question that your daughter asked. Sure, why um, did Jesus have to die? Why did Jesus have to die? Yeah. Let's just start with the biggest question possible. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah why, um, why did Jesus have to die, right? And so you're talking about what do I want to, thinking in your mind about what do I want to communicate to her in the way that I answer this? So talk through that with that example. Sure. Yeah, so one, I want her to know the question's okay. Mm. Two, I want her to know that people have been asking this question for a long time and that we haven't necessarily settled on one right answer. Mm. Like it's important for me 
to let, and this is this change based on who you are, right? But it is important for me to let her know those parts of this question, right? Um, that response of like, this is a great question. This is a big question. Um, this is a hard one to answer. Yeah, and that there's, and that it's kind of hard to answer, right? Like that it that people have people have different opinions on the answer to this question. Yeah. Um, that's important for me even when I'm going to give my answer to something, mm. right? It's important for me to let somebody know other people think about this differently than I do. Mm. Um, what do you think that does? Um, why is that important to you yeah. to, to let your daughter know, like, people have different opinions on this or there's different perspectives? Well, because as much as I think that the whole world would be way better if everybody thought and acted exactly like I do, <laughs> we um, all I, think that. I actually know that that's the farthest thing from the truth. Mm. Um, and that encouraging people to explore and be curious on their own, to wonder what, what are some of those other things that people might think about this. And it changes how we engage with one another. Coming in, um, you know, we all have sort of like confirmation bias, right? Like we all come into conversations assuming we all know that you know exactly what I am thinking about and talking about and yeah. saying that we have common definitions and language. So it's important for me, especially with a really big theological question like that, to say, you're going to encounter other people who think about this differently. Mm -hmm. It's also important from my perspective of, um, you know, even as somebody kind of called to teach about this, what is, um, I don't want to direct somebody's answer, especially at that young of an age, for their whole life process. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to leave room for, I have lived long enough, even just at 31 years, to know that my answer to some of those questions has shifted a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and so to leave a little bit of space and humility for, this might change. Um, you know, what, what I'm telling you now. So how do I, that, all of that is a framework for me uh, to affirm the question and to help her understand there's a big conversation mm. that you're entering into. Welcome, welcome to the table, right? Like, I'm so glad that you're here in this conversation. This is fantastic. Um, and, I, and I want you to know that not everybody thinks the same way about this and that there's space to play. Well, in. I think that's important to speak to, especially when we're talking about something like faith, a religion, is oftentimes something that comes along with that is this idea of, the point of this is to have the right answers. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, maybe the point feels like, or maybe they grew up where the point was certainty mm -hmm. and was kind of collecting and accumulating the right answers in their head. And so um, for parents who maybe grew up with that kind of background where the point was certainty, the yeah. point was knowing the answer, how, how can you speak to that? Of for When our kids asking questions, sometimes it feels like, well, I should be giving them the right answer. But instead, you're speaking to something like telling them the question is great, telling them people have different perspectives <laughs> yeah. and opinions on this. So can you speak yeah. to that a little bit? So what I will say is like my continuation in answering that question would probably then to say, here's what I think right now. Here's what I've come to believe. Here's what, you know, here's what my answer is to that question. Here's what our church's answer, whatever I can speak to about it, I might lay out. Right. And whether those things are exactly the same or a little bit different, I might try and kind of give those answers. Uh, my question to like a parent, the parent you're describing is what do you want to hand to your kids? What's most important for the, from your perspective for your kid to know in response to this? Is it what you believe to be the right answer? And if that is the most important thing for you that you want to respond with, you you want to lead. You want to put that early. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like you might say, that's a great question. That's fantastic. Here's what we believe about this. Mm. Right. Uh, in the same way that I might say, like, hey, in our family, we believe we should not hurt other people. Mm -hmm. So we do our best not to hurt other people. And, and I could I might back that up with sort of religious reasons and or social reasons and every every reason. But like I'm going to lead early mm -hmm. with we don't hurt people. Um, we, we do our best not to hurt people, right? And when we hurt people, we apologize. This is what we do as Ingrams, as, and I might tie to that, as Christians, as Lutheran Christians, as, but like, you know, I, that's, that's core. And I want to pass that on. And that's, that's, to me, that's a kind of thing that's really, really important. If for you, that question hits on that kind of thing, you're going to want to lead pretty early with that. I would still encourage you to affirm the question and the curiosity sure. um, and not say, we don't ask that, we just whatever, right? Um, but if it's really core 
in that way, and you want to you want to hand that sort of same certainty on, then then you're going to respond to that question in a certain way. Yeah. So again, this is you know the question that's guiding that's behind how I respond is what's the most important pieces of th information? What do I want my kid to walk away from this exchange um, knowing and feeling? Um, and and um, and so. But if it's not, right, if you grew up in certainty and you don't want to, then a great thing to do is welcome to the conversation. A lot of people think differently about this. Here's my thoughts. Here's my thoughts right now. Uh, or even, I'm not sure. Let's learn together. Right? I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know. That's also fair. Yeah. Um, the, again, you know, what do, you, what do I want? So I want my kid to know that's a great question. I want my, my kid in that situation to know that's a big question that lots of people ask and have different opinions about. And then... In my answer, when I'm sharing what I believe, um, the reason is that Jesus had to die um, or why Jesus died and all, right? Then I'm going to leave with the things that I think are most important that are going to share what God is like and why we call ourselves followers of Jesus. I love that you keep bringing us back to how we answer is modeling for our kids, how this whole thing works, like how this whole world works, how, how life works. And we could be modeling for them on one side that, um, that there's mystery and excitement and adventure to be had here. And so when they bring up questions, we're showing them like, oh, isn't that interesting? And what do you think and what do you notice? Or we could be sucking the mystery and interesting you know, out of life. So I love that you're bringing it back to that place and how we embody our answers, how, how we answer is maybe more important than even what we answer sometimes. We'd love for you to join in with this conversation. Any of your own questions, thoughts, uh, resources that have been helpful for you, uh, we'd love for you to share those. One of the best ways that you can share them with us is by following the link in the description and joining the Facebook group where we're gonna share the next videos in this series. We'll share resources and things that we've talked about or found helpful, and then you can share them with each other and have a community so that you're not trying to go through this alone.